Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is Envelope Tucks Take Two. Yesterday in the video, I had shared how I made a torn envelope, basically, and then I used the top piece of that envelope to make a side tuck. So you've still got your envelope base, and then we put a side tuck on it. And when I was done with that, I thought, well, gosh, if we have one side tuck, why in the world can't we have two? And does it really have to be done with a scoreboard or an envelope punch board? And yes, it is easier with the envelope punch board, but I figured out a way to do it without it. You do need a scoreboard or some kind of a straight line. Scoreboard's a little bit easier, but it can be done without that as well. So playing with those and having way too much fun. And then I came up with this. And it's the same concept, but rather than closing the bottom, we move that bottom flap of the envelope to the side to create yet another tuck. So it's got this front tuck here with those first flaps. And then underneath that is another tuck. And then the back of the envelope can either be a pocket or a tuck all the way down. So basically you could put three size tags in there if you wanted or a variety of things. I had done this one really quickly with some Tim Holtz people. And here's just a small version of the same thing and space for a library card, not library card, a vocabulary card or a cigarette or tea card. And then I put these cute people in the back here. Son doesn't look so happy. Mama looks pretty happy. He must be going to school or he got a job or something, something like that. And then a tag to go in the back once you glue it down. And so I thought that would be kind of fun. And I thought I'd show you real quick how to make these. I've, I'm getting quite the collection of them. And now I used thin double-sided paper. This is just copy weight paper. And it's pretty sturdy and works well. You can use cardstock. So this is a double-sided cardstock. But again, it just makes your, your piece a little bit bulkier. But it also gives you a little bit better hold for this piece right here, for this, for this tuck because this thinner paper doesn't hold quite as tightly. So I guess it just depends on what you want. And here it is without a butterfly in the middle. And I chose butterfly simply because of the orientation with the wide wings and the narrow body. And the way this flap works, it just kind of lends itself really well to that. And it can be in any size. I used a little, I don't know, this wasn't even a three by three square. And put that little butterfly there. And the nice thing too is you can orient it either way. So you can have your pieces go, you know, sideways across your page this way. Or you can turn it like this and have it go up and down your page. Because of the way it's constructed, it works real well either way. Directional paper isn't as easy to use with this concept, but it can be done. And you know, you can add a butterfly or not. If for some reason your points don't touch in the middle and you want to hide that, you can just put a little butterfly on it or just the butterfly, like I said, adds, adds an interesting touch, depending on what you're putting in there. If I were to put three solid tags in there, I think the butterfly would add a little bit of interest. Uh, like I said, it also can be done. This is just a six by six double-sided paper pad. So it's a little bit thicker. And I will show you how to do the double with the punch board first, and then I'll show you without the punch board. One thing to keep in mind, if you're working, well, you have to work with, well, you don't have to, but you know, I, starting with a square is how I constructed these. If you do it in exactly half, uh, let me see, I'll pull this one out to, I have a bigger one somewhere. Oh, here, this one. If you do it in exactly half, so you score it and punch it in exactly half, the underlay, the first layer of crossover or fold over will touch in a point. So you won't get this cool, almost quilt pattern effect if you do that. So if you score it in exactly half, if you make it a square rather than a rectangle, both of your points will meet right in the middle and you, you don't get this really cool quilt looking effect. I, so I like it better when they're, when they're a rectangle, but you can do a square as well. It, it, it does, it's not that big of a deal. Here, you know, this one was a rectangle also, so you can see how the, well, maybe if I put it in frame, you can see how the rectangle effect just kind of gives it a cool factor. All right. I will do this one with the cardstock so you can see how thick it is. And this is a six by six paper. If I score it 
or punch it, I should say, at three, then it's going to be exactly in half. So I want to either make it a little bit shorter or a little bit longer. If you have too much overlap, then your flaps, these, these little flaps here, the more overlap you have on the first layer, the smaller this triangle gets. So if you have a ton of overlap, these little triangles aren't going to meet in the middle. So keep that in mind. You don't want it to be too wonkily rectangular or you're not going to be able to do with it what you want. So I'm just going to put this one at two and three quarters. It doesn't really matter. I could do a little more, a little less, but this two and three quarters will work. So I punch, score, and it's easiest to do, I think, on the solid side or the least printed side, simply because you can see the line where you scored. And punch, score. Punch, score. And I did not ink this one, just so you can see the difference between inked and not inked. The inked one stands out quite a bit more. So you can see there, those are my score lines. And I'm going to cut off these, the top and bottom piece this time. Rather than just cutting off one piece, I'm going to cut off two, the top and bottom. And it doesn't really matter the order that you do that. If you do it before or after you fold, I don't suppose it matters much. So I'm going to fold these in on the crease, my longer pieces. And you can see there, that it's got some overlap, right? So I will trim down and it, the, this part at being straight is important to have your, your top edges line up nicely. So you want to make sure that that's straight. And that's why it's easier to do with a punch board than it is a scoreboard because it's easier to line everything up. I mean, if you're off a tiny bit, it, it's, it's really truly not a big deal. But you can see the bit of overlap there. Then I line it up on my grid work surface. And I know not everybody uses a grid work surface, but I tell you, it comes in handy for centering things. All right, and I'll line that up there. And so that's, I know this big white line is my center point. And I'll just put my magnets in place. Then I will align these two pieces up just to touch. I just want to make sure because I need a little bit of overlap here at the edge. I don't know how well that shows. Ooh, that was bad. Sorry, trying to get the lighting just right. And uh, here, let's do that. There we go. That way you don't have that light shining on there. I just line it up loosely quickly before I glue it down to make sure it's going to work. Then, okay, this is me. I'm going to ink. Normally, I would just say, what the heck, but I, I like ink. I like the way the ink makes it stand out. And it'll only take a second. And I do recommend using con contrasting paper, non-directional or direction doesn't matter, and contrasting paper for this because it allows your layers of tuck spots to stand out a little bit better. So, uh, okay, that's inked. And do I have a preference as to which is on top? No, not really. It does. It honestly doesn't matter in the least if it's the right side of the flap or the left side of the flap that's on top. Hmm. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Okay. And I just turn it to the side so I can see. And then I use, I kind of glue under basically because I don't want to glue past that flap, but I do want to glue that flap down. And a little bone folder for crease sake because this is cardstock. All right, so there's that. And then I'm going to line it up so that this white line is my center. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but close is nice. Put that in place. And now I'll put these flaps on top. And you see what I mean about the contrasting color. It just really makes it stand out and show that there's layers of tuck, tuck space. Okay, so there's one. And here's the second. Doesn't need a lot, just a little. It's fine. Or a lot if you like a lot. Then I get a piece of, you know, uh, washi work, the low tack tape, 
what have you, because I want this point to be close to the center white line. I want it to be close to the middle. It truly does not have to be exact, but close to the middle will give you that centered effect, I guess, the quilt-like effect. I guess that's a better way to put it. And then I'll just tape that down. And then I lift this up and I fold it over the edge. Now with cardstock, with regular paper, it's really easy to fold over. And in here it's not hard by any means, by any means. But I wanna fold it over that edge because again, this back is gonna be glued down and not shown. I would do something different. Now you can do the same thing do it in the exact same step, and then put another piece of paper on the back of this if you were wanting to make it an envelope that you are a, a piece that you pull out. You can just put a piece of writing paper on the top when you're all done. It'll make it more thick, but it'll also really work if you are wanting the back to show. From my case here, I'm going to glue this in this way so I don't really care if the back has this flap on it. All right, and then I'll peel up my low tack tape and I'll line up the second point. Now I haven't glued underneath here yet and I'll show you why because I wanna make sure these points touch and that they're straight and that they mostly line up. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect and if you make a mistake, that's what the butterfly's for. Well, I mean, it's not just for that, it's great decoration, but the butterfly will hide any mistake that you might make in making your points touch. Okay, so I'll line that up and put the low tack tape back down just to hold it in place while I fold this and do the same thing here. You can see it wobbled a little but that's that's not a big deal. Roll it and do the same thing. I'm gonna get out because again it's cardstock, it's thick, bone folder helps. And glue and press. All right, and I'll take off that tape and there you have it. Now the last step I do, because you want, see how those pop up because they're, they're um, cardstock and they're thicker. What I do is then, well, get glue on there. I'll come underneath and just do a line right next to the crease. So that'll hold that flap down nice and tight and create a tuck and spill out over the top. That's okay, I put a lot of glue on there. Probably more than I needed, but cardstock sometimes is a little fussier to hold tight. And push that down. And same thing on the other side. And there you have your tuck pocket. Tuck envelope. Tuck, I don't even know what I'm going to call these. And you can see this card isn't the, maybe the right color, but you've got a tuck on the top. You've got a tuck underneath, and then depending on how you put this in your book, you've got a tuck behind. So there it is with a six by six piece of cardstock. Um, what was I gonna do? I'll show you how to do it without the cardstock. Or not without the cardstock, without the punch board. And it's just slightly trickier. I used a scoreboard to do it. Um, again, you can line it up on the grid and use the lines here, but it's just a little bit fussier. It's a little bit easier to do on the grid. So what I did with this, let's move that to the side. I just chose a spot at the center of the scoreboard. And this is kind of making your points, the side points, start and stop at the same spot is what really gives you that effect. So that's what you have to make sure you're doing if you're not using a punch board. So you can see I've got red in these lines just so I could make sure I could see it because they all kind of blend together. So I've got my top, I've got it as a diagonal like a diamond. I've got my top point on the six or whatever number you choose and I've got my bottom point on the same place. And this one is just a little over five inches. So I want to make sure that those top and bottom points stay in the same center line and when I fold this over, when I crease and fold this over, I want to make sure it goes past the center. If I go too far past, again, we run into the problem of making these two triangles that we're cutting off a little too small. So I want it to go past the center, but not too far past the center. 
and so I'm going to eyeball it here right about there and that tells me this is about an inch and a half or the seven and a half inch mark on here just because of where I have it laid out but it's about an inch and a half past the center so I'm going to score this at seven and a half and that lets me know for sure that it's going to be straight well it should be straight nope see I twisted it that is super important why you have to hold the bottom and the top in the same spot it's just otherwise your paper won't be straight and if your paper's not straight you won't get the fold that you want so let's try that again since I wiggled it all right and then make sure I did it and I fold it in inch and a half okay and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other side I did it at seven and a half or an inch and a half past the six so now I need to subtract an inch and a half so that would be four and a half and I'm going to do the same thing make sure my points are on the top and bottom straight and then that way I know my paper folds that these two points are folded in the same spot on both top and bottom and that's really what matters and why it's easier to do with a scoreboard than just a straight line on your desk and I'll fold that in so this is what it looks like and here these two points match and these two points match and that's really that's really what makes the difference here and do I have a preference as one on top of the other I kind of like the blue on top so I'll go with that and I'll do the same thing that I did before and just put a little bit of glue under there to hold that center point down Now, I don't need the scoreboard anymore, not, not for that anyway. And I will trim the top and bottom off. And I'll use, so you can see, because my line is straight, I'll trim off that, that top tri triangle. And I'll put the points at the edge and trim it down. And then flip it around and do the same thing with the other side. So I'm taking off both the top and the bottom. Now, you can do the same thing if you're only wanting one tuck, right? You know, if I were to have folded this in and made an envelope, right, and not cut it off, and then you're making the single side, you can do the same thing and just put it over the top, and there you go. But because I wanted to do the bottom one, or the double-sided, I cut both pieces. If you want a single-sided, just cut one. Double-sided, cut both. Okay, and here you can see, maybe I didn't fold it over quite enough. You can see I'm not going to have any lip. Hmm. See, I, there we go. See, there you go. Learn from my mistakes. There's almost no lip to roll this. <clears throat> Pardon me. Which it's not essential to do. So I'll show you how you can recover from that. I still kind of want them to touch. And I want them to touch in the center. So I'll still line this up here. I just won't wrap it like I did the previous one. So there is the center line. And these are already inked because I had inked it beforehand. So instead of wrapping it around the edge, I am just going to glue it to the edge. So I'll put glue right here on the edge. Yeah, I wanted the blue to show. And I will put that, try to, I, I'm eyeballing it and I'm not normally a good eyeballer, but I'll eyeball it and put that down and it'll act the same way that the other one did with the wrap and in fact if I were using cardstock I'd probably deliberately do it this way simply so you don't have that extra layer of bulk I'll do the same thing with the other and match those points and line that up Oops. Okay, and not a lot of wiggle room. And there we go, pressed down. And there is the double tuck envelope. Now this section is a little narrower on this one than maybe on the others, but it still works the exact same way. So I can orient it, orient this sideways, make sure that's tucked down. And I've got, uh, this is a coffee, a tea card or a, cigarette card I'm not quite, quite sure which and tuck that bit in here and then maybe a tag there 
And then I can glue this down. Okay, the ink's, no ink's gonna make me the raw edge I don't care for. There we go. And then next layer, tuck maybe this playing card underneath there. And then I can either belly band it and drop it down this way, or I could again go, go long ways. You, you have options. And that's all there is to it. I hope that helped. I hope that made it a little bit more clear as to the construction of this and showing you how you can do it with or without a punch board. Thank you for watching. I hope everyone is well and enjoying a sunny, warm day. Take care and happy creating.